Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really nice problem from a book called 1001 Olympiad Problems in Mathematics, a book in Russian. I believe I made another video on a problem from the same book and I forgot to share the link, but hopefully this time I'll remember. If I forget, please remind me to share with you a link uh, if there's a copy of the book that I can find. Anyways, this is a really nice book. It's in Russian, by the way. I, I, can't, I don't speak Russian, but um, some people think I'm from Siberia because of the username, but that's not the case. Uh, but anyways, um, it's a really nice book, full of uh, beautiful problems, uh, a really good collection. So here's the problem we have, x multiplied by 4x squared plus 3, that is divided by the cube of 2x plus 1, and the answer is 7. So we're going to be solving this problem in two ways. Uh, I'll be presenting two methods. And the first method is kind of like straightforward, normal, brute force, whatever you want to call that. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the numerator and the denominator. And then we're going to go ahead and expand this. Maybe put that on the left-hand side. 7 multiplied by 2x plus 1 cubed. If you expand it, you're going to get 8x cubed plus 12x squared plus 6x plus 1. And that is equal to 4x cubed plus 3x. Let's go ahead and distribute, combine like terms, and come up with a full cubic. Hopefully, uh, we can solve it, right? So this gives us 56x cubed plus 84x squared plus 42x plus 7 equals 4x cubed plus 3x. Let's go ahead and subtract 4 from 56. That gives us 52x cubed. There's no other x squared. And if you subtract 42 minus 3, that gives you a 39x. And 7 is the only constant. And this is equal to 0. Nice. Now, when you have a cubic equation, what can you do? There's a couple of things you can try. First of all, before you resort to the cubic formula, which can be quite... Um, cumbersome in this case because look at the coefficient. I mean, who would want to try the cubic formula here, right? Probably no one. Or use a calculator, obviously. That's going to give you the solution. But uh, one way you can, you know, approach this problem is the rational root theorem. So in other words, we're going to be looking at the factors of 7 and factors of 52 and divide them respectively uh, to get possible solutions, or we could call them candidates. For example, what are some factors of 7? Plus minus 1, plus minus 7. And this one has quite a few, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, uh, plus minus 13 maybe, so on and so forth. You get the idea. So I can pick 7 from here and 2 from here, so 7 halves could be a candidate. But one thing to keep in mind, all the coefficients are positive, and you could also use Descartes' um, rule of science, that'll, which will probably tell you uh, how many positive and how many negative solutions there are, or I don't know, something like that. You can also replace x with negative x, apply the same rule, and come up with some ideas. But have you noticed that this equation cannot have a positive solution? Because if x is positive, everything will be positive, and it'll never be zero. The sum will never be zero. Make sense? So x, if there's a solution, it has to be negative. So that's a good thing to know. But that doesn't give us the solution, obviously. One thing to remember, though, there's always two things that I, I've been telling you in videos, that if you have a polynomial equation, you should always, always check for two things. One, the sum of coefficients. If the sum of the coefficients is 0, then x equals 1 is a solution. But in this case, you know that the sum is a positive number. The second thing you need to check is the sum of the odd coefficients and even coefficients. What do I mean by that? I mean this plus this versus this plus this. Make sense? If I do those sums, 52 plus 39 is 91, and 84 plus 7 is 91. Why did I do it vertically? I don't know. It's probably easier that way. You get to see it, right? Better. We're used to doing it that way most of the time. But you, you get the idea? They're equal. Nice. So the circles equals the squares. What does that mean? It means x equals negative 1 is a solution because x plus 1 is a factor. Or x plus 1 is a factor because x equals negative 1 is a solution. Make sense? Vice versa. Okay. So now 
we know that this is divisible by x plus 1, so we can do the polynomial long division or synthetic division or Horner's method, whatever you want to call that. Or you can just manipulate it to reflect this fact. For example, I can start with this and follow up with that. And then to make up for the difference between 84 and 52, I can add 32x squared and then follow up with 32x and then follow up with 7x to get 39x and then follow up with 7. Again, this works nicely in this case. It doesn't always work like that. But if we know that x plus 1 is a factor, it should work. Now I can go ahead and factor by group uh, or factor by grouping. This will give us x plus 1. We know that, right? x plus 1 is always going to come up, which is a common factor. And then we can finally pull it out, and the second factor will be a quadratic. How nice, right? And quadratics can be solved because there's something called a quadratic formula. It's not nearly as complex as the cubic formula. So we can easily do it. Obviously, x equals negative 1. We knew that was a solution. From this one, we get x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. Uh oh, we got a large number, 1024 minus 4ab. 4ac, I mean, that would be 140. If you subtract 924, uh, 8 something, and 10. Okay, let's just subtract, shall we? So here's here's one thing that I usually would do in these cases. You could just uh, reduce these numbers by 25, and that will be 115, and the subtraction would be a lot easier, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Anyways, you could do that uh, easily too. 884, so we got to think about the square root of that number, so let's see, it's 4 times, hmm, 400, no, it's 200 something, right, 4 times 221, and 221, I don't think that's a perfect, no, it's not a prime because it's the difference of two uh, perfect squares, which can be factored as, uh, what's it called, uh, difference of two squares, which is a really nice method, by the way. This would be 17 times 13. Okay, I knew that was a product of two primes. I, I thought about it anyway. I guessed it. So now this is the way it can be factored. So only 4 is going to come out. So x is going to be something like negative 32. Wait a minute. They're not complex solutions? b squared minus 4ac. Oh yeah, they're real, I guess. Whatever. Uh, this is going to become 2 times the square root of 221 divided by 10. I think everything is divisible by 2. No big deal. Negative 16 plus minus square root of 221 divided by 5. Okay, so those should be the other solutions. Since this is a cubic, there should be three solutions. Well, this is kind of brute forcey and obviously not very interesting. And this was a Olympiad problem, even though a lot of people are going to find this, especially those who are dealing with math Olympiads or preparing for them. will find this problem fairly easy. Uh, there's still an elegant way to solve it. So here's how it goes. We're going to multiply both sides by 4 first, and you're like, why are we doing this? And I would say, uh, you'll see in a little bit. And we don't touch the, what's it called, uh, the denominator. So we multiply four, both sides by 4, and now we're going to go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides. Subtract 1, and that'll be 27. You get the idea, it was 28. And now we're going to go ahead and subtract this perfect cube from this uh polynomial, which is going to be 8x cubed, remember that, 12x squared plus 6x plus 1, divided by 2x plus 1 cubed. I want to leave it as unexpanded, because we're going to get something nice. If you subtract, you're going to get 8x cubed minus 12x squared. 12x minus 6x is going to give you plus 6x minus 1, all over 2x plus 1 cubed. And if you pay attention to the numerator, you'll notice that it's 2x minus 1 cubed. It's a perfect cube, and this is just perfect. This is where the problem comes from, obviously. The problem author, the writer, definitely knows where this comes from, and you may not. And then from here, we can cube both sides. And this is also nice because that'll give us an idea about um, some other uh, solutions, right? Like complex. But there are no complex solutions, so where do they come from? Who knows? So from here, we can basically cube root both sides, and that should give us a 3. If you cross multiply, we'll get the following. Put this on both sides, you'll get x equals negative 1 as before. And that's basically pretty much it. I forgot to include the graph, so I'm sorry about that, but that should be the real solution. And since this channel is all not 
about complex numbers because I have another channel dedicated to complex numbers. Go ahead and check it out. It's called A plus BI. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.